Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Steel Heights Baptist Church. Good morning. He is risen. Amen. We serve a risen Lord, and we're here today on this Resurrection Sunday, Easter 2021, to celebrate our God and our Savior. So welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody who's watching online. So glad you could join us online, and everybody up in the gym watching on the uh, simulcast. So glad you could join us as well. It's going to be a very special day of worship, and I'm so excited that we can share uh, this next hour of worship together as we celebrate, uh, as we encourage one another, and we just reflect on some of the great things that God has done in this past year amidst some very difficult times in our world. God is faithful, and His gospel continues to reach the world for the sake of Christ. Well, I want to uh, begin our service this morning by uh, extending a very special welcome. And uh, to help me do that, I want to invite two brothers up onto the stage. Uh, Pastor Jamal, why don't you come on up? And we have a special guest with us today, Dr. Terry Fawson, who is the regional minister from the Alberta Baptist Association. So gentlemen, come on up. Welcome. Well, we need to social distance here, so uh, yeah, I'll just, uh, there we go. Okay, great. Well, it's such an honor to uh, have you here with us, Terry. You are a faithful servant of the Lord and a great leader, and uh, thank you for coming and joining this special service with us. Um, And uh, Pastor Jamal, uh, wow, we are just so thankful that you're with us and uh, with Pastor Nelson as well, but as some of you know, Pastor Nelson is in Kenya, and uh, he needed to make a visit there with his mother, and he's also visiting the Fresh Manna Church in Kenya. So he's been sending me some pictures, and hopefully we'll get some of those up in the weeks to come so you can see what's going on in, in Kenya. So, um, so Pastor Jamal, why don't you share with us a little bit about how this merger between Still Heights Baptist Church and Fresh Manna Fellowship got started um fresh fresh manna fellowship is a church that started um around 11 12 years ago and our vision was to you know to reach out to the nations we started off as an ethnic church but our goal was to reach out to the nations and the reason for that is because uh, our environment reflects people from different cultures and from different backgrounds. And we felt that, you know, just having an ethnic church by itself, you know, it, it, it limits us from fulfilling the Great Commission. So that has always been in our heart, but we never really, uh, we're still waiting for the right time. But we're lucky enough to, to be in contact with Still Heights Baptist Church. I've been coming here a couple of times just to visit. You know, I've met, you know, pastor and I've met some other people. And uh, we learned that the vision of this church is also heading in the same direction to reach out to people from different cultures. So we felt that uh, this will be a good opportunity for us to approach Still Heights Baptist Church and just you know, share our vision, share our hearts, and see if we can partner together to fulfill the Great Commission together because we are all heading the, in the right direction. So it all started last year in September. Myself and Pastor Nelson came to see Pastor um, uh, um, Darren, and uh, we shared our vision, we shared what was in our hearts, and uh, praise God, you know, he accepted us, so we had a very good conversation, and that's how it all started. So since last year, you know, we've been praying back and forth and trusting God until the time came where, you know, everybody voted. We we had like 99% of the people were in favor, and uh, we also understand that the people over here, 99% of the people are in favor. And then we knew that this is what God wants for us. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I know when the first time you guys came through the door, I thought maybe you are coming in to rough me up a bit. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but you know what? When you go through big changes, it does rough us up a little bit. It, it makes us look at what we're doing and why we're doing things. And, and change is part of being in the kingdom. God is, mm-hmm. is a God of new things. And so uh, I'm just so excited. Thanks, Jamal. Terry, why don't you, why don't you 
bless us. And but just before you do, yeah. I'm going to uh, ask every, anybody who's here from Fresh Manna today, why don't you stand up? And uh, all right. Let's welcome uh, our brothers and sisters, anybody up in the gym, and all those of you watching online from Fresh Man. I know there's a number of you. God bless you. Welcome. Welcome here to Still Heights. Thank you. You may be seated. And I understand that our, our, our uh, congregation uh, attendance number went up by one last night. Do you have some news do you want to share? Yeah. <laughs> <I'm>... <clears throat> I just got a, a text this morning. I don't have all the details, but I got a text from one of our members, Alan and Mignon. That they, they, had a, a, they had a baby girl last night at 11 o'clock, and I understand it happened at home. So the ambulance came, and everything happened at home. The good news is that the baby girl is doing very, very good. Everybody's okay. Praise God. All right. <laughs> right on. And, and her middle name will be EMS. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was, that was good. Perry. <laughs> That's, praise the Lord for that. You know, on this Easter Sunday, uh, as we consider the wonder of the resurrection in the shadow of the cross, we're reminded on the night in which Jesus was betrayed when he gathered his followers together, in addition to sharing around the Lord's table at the Last Supper, in addition to washing his disciples' feet, and in addition to some important final instructions, he prayed that that which we've come to know as the high priestly prayer. In that prayer, he specifically petitioned the Father for the church, for us, his followers, for our well-being, for our ministry in this world, and also especially for our oneness, our unity in this world, praying, may they, us, his followers, be brought into complete unity to let the world know that you, O oh Father, have sent me and have loved them. Mm -hmm. Following his resurrection and the birth of the church, the book of Acts demonstrates in a wide variety of people groups that are brought together to the church to point to what Paul later says, that in Christ there is no longer any distinction between Gentiles and Jews, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarians, savages, slaves, and free, but Christ is all and in all. Amen? Amen. That there's one body, one spirit, just as we're called to one hope. So in a day like ours, which is ripe with uncertainty and distrust and fear of others, there is a community of faith in this world, growing in this world, the world over, which is built on truth and love and trust and hopeful expectations, and that is the church. Amen. And in a day like ours, where there's protectionism, fearful protectionism rising up, social restrictions magnifying the isolation that we all feel so much these days, where racism continues to rear its ugly head, there is a community of faith which remains positioned as light in this world, and that is the church. And in a day like ours, when it seems countercultural, even counterintuitive for two very different churches, like Fresh Manna, and Steel Heights to come together, two churches, different cultures, different histories and practices, to merge into one church, coming to terms with the challenges and the opportunities, to come together as one church, humbly sacrificing individual differences and agendas, to serve our Lord in unity for His glory. This coming together is a rich and powerful demonstration that manifests what the scriptures have talked to us when Jesus said, as we read moments ago in his high priestly prayer, may they, the followers, be brought into complete unity so that the world will know that you, Father, have sent me and have loved them. And then as John envisions that final fulfillment of coming together when he declares, after this, in the book of Revelation, I looked... And there before me was a great multitude that no one could count Amen. from every nation, 
every tribe, every people and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We're having a taste of that in the coming together of these two churches. It's such a, a statement to our world. It's such a powerful example to the group of churches that we are known as the Alberta Baptist Association, but really churches the world over. So in that regard, I'd like to offer a prayer of blessing upon yeah, that merger. Thanks, and let's bow together now. Lord, on this Resurrection Sunday, on this day when we celebrate you, we hear your prayer calling to the Father for us, for our oneness, our unity, the strength of us being together as your people from all people, nations, and languages the world over to be a church, an example of love and unity and purpose. And I pray, Lord, together with all who are gathered here in this room and online, I ask you, Lord, for this, this merger, this, this family coming together to be a great, bright example in the years to come of what you've always intended the church to be, strong in our differences together in your spirit, by your spirit, in your name. So I pray you will bless this merger. I pray you will bless the coming together of fresh manna and steel heights. And Lord, will you be glorified as they serve you faithfully and share your word in this region and around the world. For this I pray in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Woo. Amen. Very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He's risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he will rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell the eleven disciples and everyone else what had happened. invite you to stand as we enter into worship this morning. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my turn
was when I met you. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. He's alive. He's alive. Jesus is alive. But the story sounded nonsense to the men, so they did not believe it. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. Then he went home again, wondering what had happened.
please join me as we pray together. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In your great mercy, you have given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Thank you, God, for this incredible gift of mercy. We are so grateful that because you lived and died and rose again victorious over the grave, that that means we can too. Lord God, I pray for the people who are engaging in this service today, either participating in person or online, that the eyes of the hearts of each individual may be opened and enlightened in order that each one may know the hope to which you have called us, the riches of your glorious inheritance in your holy people and your incomparably great power for us who believe. That power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead now lives in us. Lord, that is an incredible, unfathomable truth that because you lived and died and rose again, we have that same power living in us. Thank you so much, God. We praise you for that. Please give us the strength and courage and wisdom to go into the world, into our neighborhoods, into our families, God, and tell them this great news that if they would just believe, if they would just turn their hearts towards you, God, that that same power can live in them. I praise you, Lord Jesus, that the punishment that brought the world peace was on you and that it's by your wounds that we are healed. Thank you that by one sacrifice, you have made perfect forever those of us who you have called. Thank you for the sacrifice that was enough to cover over a multitude of sins. Forgive us now for the sins that we have committed, either in word or in deed or in thought, even this very morning, God. Thank you that we can come to you and confess our sins and repent, and that because of your great grace, we know that we can be made new again. Lord God, we ask that you would help us to keep in step with your spirit and help us abide in your word, live in your word, have a hunger and a thirst for it, Lord Jesus. God, would you just give each of us a calling to, um, to know you better through your word. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Will you guide us, God, to people who need to be comforted? Use us, your body, your hands, your feet, your church, God, to go and comfort those who need comforting today. Lord Jesus, would you show us who in our spheres of influence we need to reach out to with your love to bring encouragement and comfort. Give us every opportunity to love one another the way that you first loved us. We wanna pray specifically that you would comfort those who call Steel Heights their home church, those who are in our church family. God, today, those who are suffering physically, emotionally, mentally, God, you know who they are. And Lord, I ask that you would bring them comfort and strength in each of their situations. Specifically, I think of Connie and Andy Anderson, Lord, who are part of our church family who love you very much. And Andy has just been diagnosed with inoperable cancer. And Lord, 
what a hard situation, but God, I just thank you that you continue to give them your peace through this time. Thank you for the joy that they continue to have in you, even as they face such a difficult circumstance. Lord, I pray that you would surround them with people to encourage them and support them as they are going through this difficult time. Lord, would you yourself be their source of comfort? Heavenly Father, I pray that you would, oh God, that you would bring healing. Lord, we pray for healing for Andy's body, God. But Lord, we also acknowledge and trust that you are good. And so we pray for your will to be done, not ours. Lord, we need you. Thank you for the freedom we have in you to call on your name anytime, to seek you when we need comfort. Thank you for knowing each one of us intimately. Would you now call those who don't know you to a saving relationship with you as they watch the story of your resurrection take place on this stage? Lord, the, the feelings, the emotions that those disciples must have felt when they realized you were no longer dead but alive. God, would you put that into our hearts, Lord, today, that, that emotion of being so excited that you are no longer dead but alive and that we too can be alive in you if we put our hope and our trust in you. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us that much. We pray all of this in your holy and precious name, Jesus. We love you. Amen. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them, but God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there the last few days. What things? Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was, to, he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing and had seen angels who told Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to sea, and sure enough, his body was gone, just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that this, the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Please rise as we continue in worship.
Please pray a blessing with me over our offering. God, today we celebrate the greatest gift you gave to us, your one and only Son. We acknowledge that you are the giver of all good things. As we bring you our offerings, we give back to you from the abundant blessings that you've given to us. Multiply what we give to advance your kingdom in our community and around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. stone rolled away he is reason he is reason he's alive see his hands see his feet touch his cars and believe he is reason he is reason he's alive oh he lives all oh, Breaking free, hear the song of the redeemed. He is moving, he is moving, he's alive. So take his freedom, take his love. Can you feel it rising up? He is here, he is here, he's alive. Jesus, he lives. Oh. 
call our shame Left it in the grave We're forgiven We're forgiven The work forever done Only by the blood It is finished It is finished And you took all our shame By this time, they were nearing Emmaus and at the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going on, but they begged him, stay the night with us since it's getting late. So he went home with them. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. They said to each other, Did our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explain the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven disciples and others who had gathered with them, who said, The Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. <laughs> Thanks so much to our SHBC drama team, Easter drama team, for putting that together, and everybody that was involved, the actors, the tech team, Pastor Bonnie and Antoinette, thank you so much for blessing us with that drama today, just reenacting the, the gospel post-resurrection account uh, that's shared with us in the book of Luke. And this morning, I want to just kind of continue on in that theme, just what happened next after the disciples left um, from Emmaus? And what does it mean to have new life in Christ? Well, I want to ask you today, what's stirring in your heart? What is, what is uh, really, what are you really excited about? What's burning in your heart? Just like when the two disciples found out that they were with Jesus. And it, the scriptures say it was just burning in their heart when he was sharing the scriptures with them. What's burning in your heart? Maybe you got a new phone and you're really excited about that, or maybe you got a new job or a new bike or a new car. Maybe, like Alan and Mimi, you got a new baby. And as exciting as these events may seem right now, all of them are nowhere near as exciting 
as the good news that Cleopas and his friend had burning in their hearts on that very first Easter Sunday. And after they realized who their traveling companion uh, was on that seven-mile walk from Jerusalem to the to Emmaus town, as soon as they found out that who that was, that it was the risen Christ, and that he had disguised himself somehow from them, um, the two followers, once they recognized his true identity, when they sat down, they broke bread together, and I don't know if they saw his nail-pierced hands, but then the veil was lifted, and they recognized it was the Lord, and then <laughs> Jesus vanishes miraculously from their sight. So overcome with joy, what do they do? Do they stay in a man's town? No, they get up, and I'm sure they just booted it. They raced as fast as their feet could carry them back to Jerusalem so they could tell the 11 about what they had seen and heard and how they saw Jesus. And oh, how amazed those two disciples must have been when they found out that Peter and Mary had seen the Lord alive as well. Well, there they are in this secret room after that. The doors are locked, we're told. And the unimaginable happens. The unimaginable happens. Their their dreams come true because Jesus just, again, miraculously, as he left them, miraculously, he appears in his resurrection body, and he's with them right there, right in the room, and he says, oh, peace, peace be with you, my friends. And I I can't begin to imagine how astonishing that must have been for them. And he says, I'm not a ghost. Come here, touch, touch touch my hands, touch my side. Here, give me something to eat so that you know that I'm not a ghost, but I've been raised from the dead. In this glorious, physical, spiritual, resurrection body. Now that is really, really, really good news. Well, in my former profession, I used to work with a man. His name was Khan. And uh, I loved working with him. He was such a professional. He had worked with the provincial government for about 35 years as a a senior uh, director before coming to our company. And, and through um, the voice of experience, good to, to listen to that, um, he would tell me, Darren, don't be too quick to run with the good news. He wasn't talking about the gospel good news, just maybe a good news of an announcement or something like that. He said, make sure you know that it's true first, because if you're wrong, you only make yourself look bad and disappoint the people that you share the news with. Well, folks, I have some really, really good news for you today. And I've studied it. I've devoted my life to it. I've experienced it. And I've lived out this good news now for over 37 years. And since the first day that the Lord called out to me and changed my life, I have not stopped sharing the good news as the Lord gives me opportunities. I've tried my best Even as I got my haircut. Maybe some of you noticed I got a new haircut for Easter Sunday. Um, Goes with the suit. Anyways, um, you know, just as I was leaving uh, the the barber shop, I just turned to the haircutter and I said, you know, and I've got to know this person through the years because I always go back to the same person. I'm such a conservative. Um, (laughs) And I said, hey, why don't you watch The Chosen? This person is Muslim. And uh, I said, why don't you watch The Chosen? I said, okay. And they said, yeah, thank you. I said, it really does a great job of depicting how Jesus uh, walked this earth. And at first, I was just going to say, yeah, thanks, here's your tip, and walk out the door. And just, I just turned, and I had to share that good news. And I hope that that person will come to Christ, that somehow they'll be impacted. They'll watch that show, and that Jesus will speak to them. Because this good news is worth sharing. It's worth sharing. And, um, and ever since Christ has come into my life, he has made a difference in my life. He's changed my life. And you know, there's few humans, aside, of course, from Christ, who is God, um, that have had a bigger impact on the formation of Western civilization than the Apostle Paul. He's, he was this brilliant, zealous, young Jewish Pharisee whose initial passion in life was to destroy the fledgling Christian church for Yahweh. 
It's interesting that God says, okay, I got, the, uh, I got the 11 disciples. I need another disciple. Who should I pick to be like one of the most influential people in the development of the church? Let's see. I'll get the guy that wants to kill all the Christians. That's who I'll get. That's how the gospel can change a life. And he changed Paul's life when he had an experience with the risen Christ on the road to Damascus. Paul found new life in Christ. He describes this new life in his letter uh, to the church at Rome. And as Elena was sharing the, her prayer with us, that very spirit-filled prayer, she alluded to one of the, the, the truths that Paul said. He said that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in those who call him Lord and Savior. That's the Holy Spirit. The old is gone. The new has come. There's new life in Christ. The Holy Spirit comes into our lives when we receive Christ by faith. As we repent of our sins, the Bible says the Holy Spirit comes and there's this supernatural exchange that happens in our life and the Holy Spirit comes and takes up residence in our lives as followers of Christ. As Jesus said to Nicodemus, must be born again of the Spirit. Well, this past week, a friend of mine, uh, he knows I like trees, and he sent me this article on oak trees, how amazing they are. And not a lot of oaks around Edmonton, there's a few, but you go to other places in North America, and the um, oak trees are amazing. And this, this, this phenomenal process where this little tiny acorn is, is drops onto the ground and the, if the growing conditions are right, this little seedling germinates and emerges and then it grows into this massive, majestic oak tree that can live up to a thousand years. A thousand years. Well, on the night that I fully received Christ into my life, um, I prayed here initially uh, a few weeks before this night with Pastor John, and he shared the gospel with me, and I, and I wanted Christ to come into my life, but I hadn't fully, I believe, turned from my sinful life. I hadn't put it all before the Lord's feet my whole life, and I was out in a park by myself, and I was just tired. I was tired of living like this tumbleweed, just being blown around by the destructive winds of my sinful life. And up to that point, it wasn't good news that was burning inside of me. It was my own evil lusts that were swaying me and, and starting to just, just damage my life as I gave myself over to that, that pursuit of those type of things in my life. But by God's grace, there in that park, I got down on my knees and I repented of my sins and I, I prayed as earnestly as I could and I said, Jesus, come into my life. Let me send down roots deep into your truth, God. I want to I wanna flourish in this life. I'm tired of being a tumbleweed, just blown here and there. God, come into my life and make me the person you want me to be, Lord, I want to have new life. I want to have purpose in Christ. You know, from the, that first day that a person receives Christ, those who follow Jesus, we all have a, a similar story. Maybe it was an event. Maybe it was a process. But we came to that place, that juncture in the road, where we said, I'm going to live my life for Jesus. I'm going to follow him. I don't have all the answers, but this one thing I cannot deny. Jesus Christ is my Lord, and I have new life in Him. Well, the Bible says that when that happens, then we are like a tree. Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8 says, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Are you trusting in the Lord today? Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the streams. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries of a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. This transformation that takes place over time as we grow in God's grace and knowledge... Because it, 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 is a, it is a process. 
God is shaping us. He's forming us into his image. And as we serve and worship him, and as we enter into community with other believers, and we participate with the Holy Spirit in serving and in worshiping and in giving and all these things that happen once we've received Christ into our lives, then that God is doing this beautiful growth in us, and we begin to to flourish in our Christian life. Yes, there's setbacks and there's times when we get caught up in a mess of sin or maybe there's even a season where we struggle with doubts and we wander, but God is gracious and he meets us. And Jesus has this incredible ability, just like he met the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, he meets us in the unexpected times of life. Even when we've turned away from him, the Lord is gracious and he is is slow to anger and he longs that we come back to him in repentance so that we can receive his nurture, so that we can sit under that shady shady tree of his grace and that we can be restored and that we can be re envisioned and renewed so that we don't grow stale, that we don't grow cold, that we don't turn into a tumbleweed and just start being blown around by the things of this world. No, God is, he meets us on the road of life and he calls out to us. And we know that, we remember that God's mercies are new every morning. The Bible says, great is the faithfulness. Oh, great is God's faithfulness. He doesn't give up on us, folks. He doesn't. Because of his great love, we're not consumed. We're not consumed. Our hope is in heaven. Regardless of what happens in this life, we are not consumed. We're through the rigors even of, of, of new life transformations because sometimes it is rigor. Sometimes it is a matter of discipline. And then there's the times, those beautiful euphoric times when God just speaks to our hearts. And he reminds us that we are his children, that the spirit whispers to our spirit, you are sons and daughters of the most high God. And as we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Folks, we are all on the road to Emmaus in this life. And there is a starting point and there is a finishing point. And I pray, I pray that you won't reject Christ or just simply just pass him on by on the road to to Emmaus. I pray that that you will not delay the day of salvation in your life any longer. Don't pass him by. Don't turn away from him when he calls out to you. Today is the day of salvation, folks. Jesus said the road of faith is the narrow road. And wide is the road of destruction, and many travel on that. But God invites us to follow him on that narrow road of life. And to receive the new life. And we're not so naive we don't, that we think that it's going to be just easy peasy all the time. No, the Lord is our shepherd, though. And he walks with us. His goodness and mercy accompany us all the days of this life. And then as we grow with him, we learn perseverance. We learn what it means to go through the season of doubt and despondency. And we, we continue on that journey with Christ And God sees the bigger picture. He always sees the bigger picture because he's God. And the ultimate expression of the gospel is not just lived out in the new life of this life, but ultimately the bigger picture is that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever when our days on this earth are done. God knows we're made of clay. We're like these clay pots. But what's within us, the Spirit of God, is eternal. Paul says, don't lose heart. Even though outwardly we're wasting away, inwardly we're being renewed. That new life is being renewed in us day by day for these light and momentary troubles. They're achieving for us eternal glory that outweighs anything that this world can throw at us. Because our God has overcome this world. This is our inheritance. This is our hope, still heights. This is the promise that sin and death cannot steal away from us because it was purchased through Christ's death on that cross. Through his blood, we receive redemption for our sins and relationship with Christ. 
When you think about just a little itsy bitsy caterpillar, and you think about how through the phenomenon of nature, somehow that 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 butter or sorry that caterpillar goes through a metamorphosis, a transformation, and becomes this incredible butterfly with wings and beautiful patterns and colors. And our earthly bodies that are sown perishable, these clay pots, one day they'll be raised imperishable, the Bible says. These lowly bodies will be raised up in glory, just like Jesus was in his resurrection body. These present bodies that are weak will be raised in power through the resurrection that comes through Christ in the great resurrection day. The trump will sound, the Bible says, the, the, the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed forever and we will receive the inheritance of our faith. Folks, Christ alone can offer us new life. And so if you're watching today online or if you're up in the gym or you're here in the sanctuary and you don't know Christ is your Savior today, I want to lead you in a prayer of salvation that you may receive Christ. It's, it's that starting point where you give your life to Christ. That The Bible says that as many as received Him as Lord and Savior, He gave them the right to be called the children of the Most High God. It starts by faith and repentance. And so wherever you may be, in the sanctuary, upstairs, in the gym, online, if you don't know Christ or you want to renew your relationship with Jesus Christ today, I'm going to ask you, to pray this prayer with me. Let's pray together. Oh, Father in heaven, I need you. I need you in my life, God. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you for sending your son and giving us the ability to receive new life through our faith. So God, come into my life today. Lord, make me the person you want me to be. God, I'm tired of living in disobedience to you. I'm tired of running away from you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, hear my prayer today. Lord, I open the door. I receive you into my life, Lord. I surrender my all to you, and I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I want you to be my shepherd, God. Lead me through this life, God. Fill me now with your new life, or fill me afresh, God, with the new life that only comes from you. Lord Jesus, I believe that you can do this. I believe that you are the son of the living God. And I thank you for coming to my life right now. Amen. Well, this next video shares some of the truths about what happens to a person when they receive new life in Christ.
Um, I'm going to just ask you to stand as we sing um, this song. Thank you. Arise, my soul. Thank you, choir slash worship team. Wow, what a way to end our service. All this for your glory, Lord, for your glory. Oh, God, lead us, God. We are your people. We want to live for your glory, God. We want to shine your light. We want to tell the news, the good news of new life in Christ. Lord, fill us now. Fill us afresh with that same power that you raised Jesus from the dead with. Oh, God, let us be people of your glory. Oh, Lord, give us victory. Give us victory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you, everyone. For those of you, if you prayed that prayer, whether online or here in the services, I encourage you to come and talk to me if you're here. I'd love to share with you some more, some more things about your new life in Christ and give you some materials to help you walk in the newness of this life that you've received today. 
And if you're watching online, send me an email, darren at shbc.ca. I'd love to get in connection with you and, and share some more about the hope that we have. Go in his grace, still heights. Go in his peace. God bless you. He is risen. He is risen. Amen.